Hello everyone. We're ready for another CCO live or live with CCO, whichever is easier for you to say. We're on episode 45 and I can see a lot of you already doing the perfect thing by telling us what uh your where you're from and i just wanted to give a shout out to sharon from johnson city tennessee because i have been to your neck of the woods and was a guest speaker i think at least twice so that was a lot of fun to go over i have um friends in Morristown and so uh that was nice to go see that and Jamie from Kentucky looks like we got some really good east coast people Gainesville Florida Richmond Virginia and so uh awesome that's that's fabulous uh well we have a great topic tonight with our live with CCO it is a question that we get very very often with people looking at a career using the code sets now this could be medical coding and billing this could be also um it it could be uh well, any, any, actually any uh, thing that deals with codes are going to have to use medical coding books. And it came to our attention that we had talked about this a long time ago, and it was time to refresh and let you have updated information about medical coding books. There's actually two types of books that you need to be familiar with now we may say oh books right but that doesn't mean the same thing when we're talking about the coding industry that uses manuals there are books or textbooks or even reference books but that's not the same as a manual in fact you will notice that people in the industry don't call their manuals books they actually use the term manual that would be like you not using the word dictionary uh, or using book to describe a dictionary although how many people use a dictionary anymore everybody uses their phone and looks things up right I'm a big fan of dictionaries and I can tell you that uh, and say that my children when we did some homeschooling in the past now our my children are older now but they will tell you that they used to have to write a dictionary page why because i had to do that in school <laughs> and there's a lot of things you can learn by writing a dictionary page anyway i digress the manuals are not really called books you're not going to find anybody really that calls them a book but the textbooks they do call books let's talk about the difference textbooks is what you learn to code from this is the uh, background information about the medical industry uh, you'll learn compliance you'll have the pathophysiology of pharmacology in there and then it'll talk and teach you how to use all of the code sets and there's more than one also with the textbooks there's multiple publishers it just really depends who you're getting your education from now a lot of schools are not going to use their own books textbooks they get them from another publisher like Elsevier who is probably the leader in coding textbooks they are one of the leading publishers for medical uh, education and they have a lot of uh, textbooks that are used for the nursing industry as well as others and they've got it divided up into specialties but they are a really large uh, publisher for textbooks and then there is the ability to have excuse me your textbooks in both hard copy and online now back when we had previously talked about this and you may pick up one of our old youtube videos because we've been doing this for about a decade um they didn't have that option for online 
textbooks like they do now. And if you feel like you would benefit or that's something you're more comfortable with, then a lot of, of the publishers offer their textbook online. Now, again, depending on who you use for your education, that would make a difference on what publisher uh, you use. And there are several out there. Uh, I think that that would be something I would ask about as you're interviewing the different organizations or schools, whether online or brick and mortar, is what textbook or what publisher do they use for their courses? Uh, that is going to be very telling. We're big fans of Elsevier and have used them for years. Uh, I like their textbooks because they're, they're colorful, the, they're vibrant, very, very well done, and they've been doing um, medical coding education for a very long time, well over a decade. Now, that all being said, the online versions are pretty cool, plus they offer a additional uh, resources when you purchase a textbook from the publisher. Not all of your schools are going to give you your textbooks or your manuals. You most likely will be purchasing those on your own um, and therefore maybe an online copy would be more suited to you. Let's talk about the manuals themselves. Unlike the textbooks that are teaching you about the industry and the code set, the tech, or the manuals are what you use to do the job, right? You use the manuals to code. Now, in the past, I often referred to manuals like a telephone book because if you wanted to call somebody you would um, look at the, the the telephone book for the town that you were in or were calling somebody from and then you would look up the person's last name it's alphabetical and then you would break down the name of, you know, if you had uh, Fredericks was the guy that you were going to call your friend. And then you, uh, the guy's name was Charles. So you would look up Charles Fredericks and maybe there's a Charlie or a C Fredericks. You know, if you knew the person's spouse, a lot of times they had both in the book, right? Uh, and then if you knew the address, you were able to keep narrowing it down to the ultimate goal of identifying the phone number so that you could call. That's really how manuals work. They are a code uh, set. So you look up, say, the diagnoses uh, that are available in, say, um, a uh, myocardial infarction. So you would look up infarction and then you would look up what type because you can have infarctions all over your body. Uh, ultimately, it's a blockage, right? And so you would say, well, this is a myocardial cardial and then you would go down to myocardial and then you would look over to see where the code is then that would be just like the telephone book then you would open up the rest of the manual to the tabular which this will all be explained in your course the difference between index and tabular and then that would give you all of the description or definition for that code. And if it applies, then you know that's the code that you need, right? And there's guidelines, there's rules, regulations, understanding the disease process, all kinds of things. And that's just for ICD-10, the diagnosis. We'll talk about that manual a little more in depth. But you have CPT, HCPCS, uh, ICD-10, PCS, all of these manuals are how we translate the information, the documentation that a provider puts down regarding the patient into a code set. Now, I'm not going to get on another tangent and tell you why we code and so on and so forth, because again, I could easily fall down that rabbit hole. Let's talk about the publishers. There are multiple publishers for the manuals, except for the CPT manual. Now, I'm going to talk about each one of these manuals 
individually. The CPT manual is owned by the AMA and they have a copyright on that manual. So there's only one publisher. Literally in your class or your course, when that uh, instructor tells you to to turn to page, you know, 112, and you're going to look up a uh, Mohs surgery. That's exactly the same page that everybody that looks up Mohs surgery for that year will be on because there's only one publisher. Uh, there also is versions online as well as hard copies. Now, uh, the they you probably are not going to have an online version uh, unless you purchase that via an encoder software okay so you might think well that'll save me a lot of money uh, to use an online version and yes it it could because there's other resources that are available also for online however you can't use an online version to test so uh, you'll always be purchasing hard copies of your manuals until after you're out in the world quoting and even then you may be purchasing hard copies as well as having access to an encoder that's either you're purchasing uh, access every year yourself or uh, your employer is. Regarding the encoder there's different types of encoders and all different organizations and companies that provide encoders uh, but again as a student you're not going to have you're, you won't have access you won't need to have access for that um, so don't get confused about those being online let's talk about the manuals individually the first one I referenced a moment ago about the CPT manual that's published by the AMA they own it and what's kind of unique about that is it's required by law that we use the CPT manual owned by the AMA so the AMA is a huge organization and this manual is called the CPT manual which stands for current procedural terminology this is how we use for outpatients and anything in the the any procedure that's done in the office or outpatient setting the codes that translate right now how would I describe that let's say that we are using another language right so there's more than one way to speak Spanish right we have Spanish that they speak in Spain and we have Spanish that they speak in uh, El Salvador and Guatemala and Mexico, uh, Argentina, all of these are different areas that speak Spanish. However, they are subtly different. For the most part, if you live in Spain and you go to Mexico, you can carry on a conversation pretty easily, but there will be words that are different. Same thing with English, right? You can go and speak English in Scotland, but there is still words and verbiage and phrases and accents that aren't exactly the same. That is how ICD works, but CPT would be a universal language that everybody spoke and understood. Okay. Uh, and it translates procedures in the outpatient world. Right. Uh, very good. Now, they have a copyright and they are very, very careful to protect that copyright. Uh, that being said, you cannot make copies of the CPT manual. Uh, you cannot, uh, we can't, we used to use different forms of the BAT technique uh, and we aren't allowed to do that because you visually can't show, even with teaching, they're extremely strict about how much visual access that a person has to the CPT manual. 
But the positive side is that everybody uses the same manual. Every year it's updated and generated, so they use different colors for it and stuff. And another thing about your manuals that besides online, for your hard copies, you'll either, either get a spiral version or a hardbound version. And I think that is um, kind of interesting. You can um, get whichever you prefer. Uh, another little note about the AMA. I put in the green box that just states that they were founded way back in 1847. Their headquarters is in Chicago and um, they have uh, as of 2016 over uh, almost 250,000 members. Probably about that now you can again become a member of the AMA, the American Medical Association, and you can do more research about them uh, on your own. And I encourage you to do so because if you're going to get into this industry, they are leaders not just for producing the CPT manual, but other areas. They're, they're leaders in the industry. All right. Now, my favorite manual is the ICD-10 manual. Why? Because it's diagnoses. It is so much fun. Now, again, some people love the procedure aspect of what we do in this industry, uh, what you do to the patient. I, in turn, love what's wrong with the patient and how that affects other diagnoses and the body systems. And I'm really into anatomy and uh, terminology and that type of thing. So this is what, um, what drives me is ICD-10. Other people absolutely fall in love with the CPT aspect. Uh, so when you start your education, you may notice that one uh, attracts your attention more than the other. And they're very similar. We do, we look up things the same way. I use the example of looking up an infarction and it's myocardial. And then I mentioned Mohs surgery. Uh, Mohs surgery looked up the same way. Uh, there's an index and then they don't call it a tabular, but the definition part of the CPT manual where you can look up different procedures. It's the uh, ultimately like looking something up in the dictionary or looking at a telephone book. Again, somewhat obsolete in today's age, I guess. Uh, what's interesting about the publishers of the ICD-10 manual is that it, is, it does not have a copyright. And that's advantageous to us because competition drives how much these cost, uh, as well as uh, you may have a different version that resonates with you versus another. Now, on ICD, again, you can get a spiral or a hardbound, which it doesn't mean it's hard. It's still a soft book, but it has the hard binding versus the spiral binding. I am a big fan of the spiral just because I think the pages open easier uh, and predominantly you'll see those sold more than the other, I think. Now, uh, the World Health Organization or WHO, there's not just about too many people that wouldn't know who the who is with everything that's gone on in the health industry in the last few years, right? They're on TV a lot or commented on, mentioned in the media. Uh, but the World Health Organization is who creates or uh, they I wouldn't say they necessarily, well, maybe you could say they own the ICD-10 code set, but um, uh, again, the publishing rights are open to ICD-10. If you wanted to create your own ICD-10 manual, you could absolutely do that and publish it and sell it. Um, you know, uh, so a version of it. It'd be very expensive, but you could absolutely do that if you wanted to. And there's, again, little attributes that different publishers have. And because of that, the ICD-10 manuals every year get better and better. Um, some are color coded. Some have really good graphics in them. The type of paper, you may like one type of paper than a, versus another. I've always been a huge fan of Elsevier's ICD-10 manual. They they used Carol Buck, um, who is uh, the publisher of one of the best uh, textbooks out there for the coding industry. 
and uh, again it's a manual that she has helped produce through Elsevier and and I've just always been attracted to that but there's other uh, publishers like a big one would be Optum and um, uh, or you may be familiar with some all you have to do is jump out to Amazon type in ICD 10 manual and you'll get all the publishers will have access to them uh, you can ask people who are in the industry that still buy manuals you know which they prefer or which they used in their school maybe um, there's uh, again a lot uh, in, your instructors ask which one resonates with them the great thing about what we do at CCO is we allow you to get your manuals yourself that way you we don't have to put overhead costs on them and some people have access to discounts now I've mentioned Elsevier several times because we like them as a publisher uh, our students get a uh, discount uh, uh, when they purchase directly from them also uh, uh, that uh, a lot of times they don't have to pay shipping you can buy them off manu uh, uh, your manuals off Amazon and get a discount because you have uh, maybe Amazon Prime you don't have to pay shipping and somebody maybe gave you an Amazon coupon uh, or a gift card uh, the one thing about the World Health Organization and ICD-10 that I wanted to mention is that every year you get a new manual, right? There's uh, updates in ICD-10 and CPT. We can't not mention ICD-10 PCS, another brilliant cold set, my second favorite. It is similar to CPT in that it covers procedures, but it's for inpatient procedures, at least right now. I foresee it taking over CPT in the future because it's just a much more brilliant code set. It's multi-axial and it allows for um, not running out of space with the codes. Uh, uh, again, you can hear me talk about that in a, uh, another video uh, because I talk about PCS frequently. The CDC is who develop or CMS uh, develops this code set uh, with the help of the CDC and it stands for procedural coding system ICD-10 PCS it also is not copywritten like CPT which is advantageous um, there's not a monopoly on the ICD-10 PCS manual so multiple publishers uh, available just like ICD-10 and HixPix the Hixpix manual is not talked about very often and you will uh, find some people that go through their course and, and especially if they're taking a course uh, through a, a university or a school and getting a degree they'll say you know what we didn't even we didn't even touch Hixpix uh, I feel very unprepared to use it well there's several reasons that you might not use your Hixpix manual one is that there is less than five to, th or, or I think there's now only three questions on the Hicks picks on the AAPC exam. Uh, so you technically have to buy a manual to answer three questions. Uh, now, I would not do that because three questions can make a real difference in your ability to pass the exam, especially if you miss it by two points, right? Which is something I hear a lot from people. But the Hicks Picks manual is really CPT, or I should better translate that as saying CPT is Hicks Picks, right? It's uh, that may or may not confuse you, but HixPix stands for Healthcare Common Procedural Coding System, and it has two actual subsystems. There's level one and there's level two. Now, when you're out there in the real world and you're coding, nobody says level one and level two. They say CPT and HixPix. Um, but again, a lot of people don't realize that HixPix is the code set and there's CPT is level one HixPix. Again, they are produced by the AMA. However, 
this is one that you can get multiple versions on unlike CPT. So CPT level one has a copyright through the AMA. Level two does not. And what it covers is product supplies and services that are used for patients, mostly paid by Medicare and Medicaid but predominantly Medicare. Well, since not everybody that is insured uses Medicare, it's not used as much. Although keep in mind, Medicare is the largest payer in probably the world. So, uh, and that's just in the US. Uh, now, with that, uh, these are gonna cover things like supplies uh, for the patient, say they need a wheelchair cushion or a wheelchair itself, or they need a cane, or they need um, gastrostomy bags, or uh, catheters, or um, uh, supplies to clean their dentures. I mean, just so many things that are products as what are supplies, but uh, all of your injections that would be given say you need a b12 injection every month that would be in there would be a code to describe that uh, or you are going to get a um uh you get a flu shot every year it's got a hicks fix number right now that also being said there would be services included you got an ambulance ride to the hospital from your house there's a code for that. And um, uh, we don't use them or talk about them as much because you look them up and use them the same way you do a CPT code. There's just another manual for the Hicks picks. And so if you know how to use the CPT manual, you know how to use a Hicks picks manual. It's that easy. So we do teach chapters on Hicks picks, how to use them, because there's also modifiers that are exclusive to Hicks picks, as well as modifiers that are exclusive to CPT. But don't worry, again, that's all explained in your course. But you need to know the difference between your CPT manual, your ICD-10-CM, your ICD-10-PCS, and the Hicks picks manual. Let's talk about a few other things, information that you're going to need to know about. We have frequently asked questions that you'll be able to go to our website uh, regarding the manuals and have those questions answered. Uh, I also wanted to make you aware of if you're curious what manuals you would need for a particular course, we've got that. You can go to cco. Uh, us forward slash books and we've divided them in all the courses that we teach and um, even icd-10 we teach as well as inpatient outpatient outpatient facility etc and so you can go in look at those uh, uh descriptions of which tech or manual you would need and then there's a link for you to go and uh, purchase them if you want. Now, we're not selling them. We are just providing a link. You could also just go on Amazon, but go and look at the books and the descriptions of them in our website before you jump out and go to Amazon so that you understand what the manuals are. When you are uh, thinking about your coding manuals, um, you might say, well, I'm going to test with a HEMA or I'm going to test with the AAPC. Which vendor do I need for the AAPC exams? It, and vendor would be publisher. It, it's not going to matter, right? You can get a bundle of all of the manuals through the AMA, even though they publish the CPT manual, they sell a bundle. The AAPC, they sell a bundle. Optum, they sell a bundle. They all get the CPT manual because it's copywritten from the AMA, but they uh, purchase them in bulk and put them in a bundle together, or you can purchase them individually through those organizations. That would be one. Uh, and, and again, you may want to go on Amazon and 
purchase a bundle or them individually. Also, uh, should I buy this year or next year's manuals? Mm, you buy the manual for the year you're going to test in. Now, when it gets a little tricky is when you start getting to the end of the year around October, November, and you're starting your course because you're going to take your course with the manuals that are out and that are uh current for that year and then if you don't finish your course by the end of the year you'll be testing in the next year which means you will purchase new manuals so you test with the manual that uh, for the year that you're in to not do that is doing yourself a disservice now I know you want to save money and I haven't even mentioned how much these manuals are but let me give you a little tip every one of those manuals are over a hundred dollars each for the current year that you're in now they discount heavily as you get close to the end of the year but that's because nobody's going to buy them it's not that they are worthless as you get into the next year it's just that nobody's going to use them to test and uh, therefore always purchase for the year that you're going to test the caveat to that is hey guess what uh, they don't come out until the end of the year uh, ICD will uh, ICD 10 and PCS will come out first and the reason being is the new codes drop in October and um, so right away you'll start being able to order and they will arrive in October or November. Now, uh, the next manual that will drop will be CPT. And then the Hicks picks, you usually can't get till mid December. <laughs> uh, and that being said, is that if you want to test, um, then you know that you can't get that new manual and order them in a bundle together until the end of December. So uh, talk with your instructor. Can you learn in a previous year? Yeah, you probably could, but you absolutely are not going to test without getting the current year that you're in. Uh, there's just too much money that you're paying for your education, paying for the exam itself, then investing in the manuals to um, uh, sell yourself short and not pass because you didn't have the proper codes in your manual. Uh, then it's next question that you'll see often uh, asked in our FAQs and answered would be which books and materials are allowed at the AAPC exams. You can use any publisher for the exams. Now, keep in mind, one of the reasons I told you to go reference our cco.us forward slash books is that depending on what exam you're going to take will determine what manuals you need. If you take the inpatient exam, uh, through either AHIMA or the AAPC, whether it be the CIC or the CCS, you're not going to need the CPT manual for the AAPC's CIC exam. You'll need the ICD-10-CM, the ICD-10-PCS uh, manuals, and that's it. Now, if you're going to test for the CCS, I believe you need all of them because I do believe that has CPT questions in it. Uh, uh, check with AHIMA and verify that. Now, if you're, say, going to take the compliance uh, credential, you don't need any manuals for that. If you're going to take billing, you're going to need the ICD, uh, uh, CM, the HICSPIX, and the CPT manual. So again, look for the exam that you're going to take, see what manuals you need via the website. Um, also, there's other questions that can be answered for you there. And it gets confusing uh, when someone doesn't have a background or even if you're a clinician and you're looking at all of this verbiage and say, okay, wait, wait, this is the textbook they use. There's a textbook and a workbook. Oh, wait, I got to buy three manuals or I got to buy five manuals. Um, and 
with them being ha different publishers, uh, they look different, and uh, then you say, well, which is the best? Or I can save five dollars if I get this one, and so on and so forth. So I encourage you to check with the um, instructor that you're going with or the school that you're going with. Uh, we really try very hard to make it as simple as possible by adding these FAQs and our instructors uh, will call. They have coaches that will call you before you start the course and talk to you about the manuals and the textbooks and the workbooks and kind of go through this briefly uh, to explain that concept because it is a lot to take in and it's a financial burden that you need to budget for. That is extremely important. Um, know that it is significant. You don't have to have a top college degree to do this, but it's still an investment in your education by the time you pay for your course, you pay for your manuals, and then you pay for your testing, right? All right, we ha have listed here the information on how to uh, uh, determine uh, which is ICD, CPT, who the publishers are and stuff. The CDC, the AMA, and CMS all talk about those. So feel free to use those resources. Um, Christy says, what would you use to code in urgent care or quick care facilities? That would be ICD-10, CM, and CPT, and HECSPEX. Those are the three manuals that you would use for urgent care because they do not use the inpatient code set, uh, they are considered outpatient. Great question. Uh, Deborah. thank you for explaining about buying the books and the year you test. I proctor frequently and get asked that question every time. Absolutely, Deborah. Feel free to um, use this as a resource if somebody is a visual learner and they do well with uh, watching videos to explain versus uh, writing that stuff down or reading about it. Uh, that's, again, another reason why we like putting these up for uh uh, everybody, instructors, proctors, local chapters. Uh, again, it, we hopefully will have made this easy for you. We have fun at cco.us um, and feel free to send in questions to us. We have a great club that has a, a community in it that answers questions all the time. We like to have our passion spill over to you guys. Come to cco.us and um, join the networking opportunities and the resources that we provide. You can always find us on YouTube. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.